Hi, I'm Mike from Boca Film Studios, and today I just want to talk about the gear that I use for all of my weddings. I know lots of people do these what's in my bag type videos, and what I want to talk to you about today is specifically the things that I take when I go to shoot that perfect cinematic wedding footage. So before I get too far into all of the gear, there is this awesome, awesome company called Kit. And on kit.com, you can go ahead and take a look at other cinematographers' gear and equipment that they use for each and every one of their wedding films. Every item that I'm gonna talk about here today is in my kit, and I've got a link to my kit in the description of this video. So for me, the gear that I wanna talk about today comes down to four essential parts. Number one, what types of bags do I use to travel and, and carry all of the essential equipment that I need for that epic cinematic footage? Number two, what kinds of cameras and lenses do I use to make sure that I'm getting every essential shot that I absolutely need to make the perfect cinematic wedding film. Number three, what kinds of hardware do I use for both my cameras and my lighting? Number four, audio. We have to talk about audio. If you are not spending just as much time researching your audio equipment, you are really missing out on an essential piece of your wedding films that's really gonna take your films to the next level. So let's get started. I just purchased this brand new Temba bag. It's something that actually Craig Adams told me about when we shot a wedding together last summer. And it is something that has really changed the way that I travel to wedding films. Essentially, if I'm going to a location that I need to travel a long distance for, I can fit just about everything in my Temba bag. The best part about it is it's super long, fits all of my hardware, my lighting stands, my tripods, my monopods, and it fits all my essential gear as well. The best part about it is that it's a rolly bag, so I don't necessarily need to carry it everywhere. I really can let the bag do the work and just have the wheels take most of the weight. There's so many great compartments inside of this bag as well that really helps for all of, not just the bigger items, but the small items as well, just to have a spot where I know it's gonna be safe and secure. It is a little bit more on the expensive side, but trust me, it is such a lifesaver when you're running all over trying to shoot your next wedding film. The next bag that I have is just a backpack. It's a, it's a regular camera backpack and it opens up real nice and there's some really great features about this. It's something that I used at every wedding last year. This year I've gotten away from it a little bit. Um, I don't need the Temba bag and this for everything. Although when I'm doing travel location shoots, especially corporate shoots, I do bring this bag just for the added protection of all of my gear that I have to take with me. My third and final bag that I wanna talk about is actually my shoulder bag that I use for every single wedding. This bag does not leave my side. It's something that can easily store my cameras, my lenses that I want to, to change in and out throughout the wedding. I keep my batteries in here, I keep gum in here, I keep water in here. Anything that I wish that I had right next to me when I wanted to make a change, I put it right in this bag. This bag is essential for someone especially who is run and gun filmmaking um, and especially if you are a solo shooter. You don't want to go run back to another room or to another location where there is all the rest of your gear. You want every essential piece of equipment with you at all times, just in case. This year, with all of the weddings that I'm shooting, for the most part, I am just using my Temba bag and this bag right here for every single wedding. Okay, now that we talked about bags, I wanna switch gears and talk all about cameras and lenses. Right now I shoot on two cameras, both Sony products. The first is the Sony a7S II. This camera is phenomenal. It's really what most people are using nowadays because it's so light, it's great in low light situations. It does an amazing job shooting 4K at a full frame sensor 
it's phenomenal. Now, Sony is coming out with the A7S III, hopefully next month. That's something I'm really looking forward to because while this camera is phenomenal, the one thing I really wish that it could do that it currently cannot do is shoot at 60 frames per second in a 4K resolution. That's something that's really going to help me out because I do like to shoot a lot of my videos or at least certain portions of the videos in slow motion. Right now, if I wanna shoot in 60 or 120 frames per second, I do have to go to 1080p, which is still full HD, excellent quality, but of course, I'd love to see that in 4K, and that's my hope for the a7S III. My second camera that I use is the Sony a6500. It is a crop sensor camera, but it still shoots in 4K in the picture profile that I really personally like, which is more of a flat log profile, but it really does the job of a camera too. It's something that I really like to have as a backup, especially when I'm shooting weddings by myself. It delivers phenomenal content, exactly what it is that I need as a solo shooter for weddings. The A6500 is certainly less expensive than the A7S II, and something that you might wanna consider using if maybe the A7S II is a little bit out of your price range. Right now, I currently shoot on three different lenses for really, really specific needs. I guess if I'm gonna give you advice about lenses, what I would say is that you need to choose lenses that are for a specific purpose. What exactly do you want these lenses for when you're shooting wedding films? So for me, I kind of span all the ranges from 16 millimeters to 200 millimeters. Now, one of the things I actually really love about the Sony a7S II is that you can actually go two times optical inside the camera without losing resolution, so says Sony. So if I'm on a 55, I can actually go up to 110 millimeters right with the camera itself without changing lenses. That to me is a huge feature of the Sony a7S II. So the first lens that I have is a Zeiss lens that is a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. I use this lens for all of these types of videos. It's a really nice wide angle lens. It is an f4, which isn't my favorite for aperture, but it does really do a great job, especially when I'm using this lens on a gimbal outside for weddings. This lens gets used all the time for all of my gimbal shots, any wide angle shots. I use this for almost all of my videos because it just is able to capture so much more. Right now, I think this is shooting at 35, maybe 30. So you can see that this lens can open up quite a bit if I really want it to. The second lens that really is my workhorse lens is the Zeiss 55 1.8 aperture lens. This lens is absolutely gorgeous. I can get that perfect depth of field with this lens, get amazing looking bokeh in the background with this lens. It really delivers a crystal clear image and is something that I really, really love using for about 80% of my weddings, I would say, I'm on this lens. The third lens that I use is the 70 to 200. It's a lens made by Sony. It is the F4.0 version, not the really nice, super expensive one, but to be honest, even at 4.0, it does the job. I use this for any part of a wedding where I really need the camera to be further back, but want to get nice and close profiles. Mostly I use this during the ceremony as well as toasts during the reception. So there are my lenses all the way from 16 millimeter to 200 millimeters. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is hardware. And I kinda wanna throw in a bunch of my other gadgets into this one as well. So for me, for the most part, I am a Manfrotto guy. I use the Manfrotto 190X for my tripods. And I also use the Manfrotto lighting stands for all of my lighting. They are just dependable, they are reliable, it's a company that I certainly trust with my very expensive cameras and camera gear. So I would highly recommend you going ahead 
and taking a look at Manfrotto stands for all of your camera and lighting needs. Now I've gone back and forth between the different style heads that are on these. Obviously you wanna go with a fluid head, something that really gives you that nice tilt up and down and also side to side as you're shooting. A little bit of motion in your wedding films really helps people understand that this isn't just a set it up on a tripod old school style video. It shows that you're really getting some of that cinematic motion in the background when you're shooting your films. Those are really important. So for me, I use the MHX Pro 2W heads. Um, I've had the plates, the longer plates, and I switched back to these. I really like them. I think they do the trick. And also you can buy separate plates and put those on top of all different types of gear. That really helps for the quick release of switching cameras, switching lenses, and really switching from one unit to another. So while I just said all this great stuff about Manfrotto, the one item that I purchased from Manfrotto that I really just it didn't work for me was a Manfrotto monopod. To be honest, I don't even remember which one it was, but I do remember that it didn't do everything that I wanted. What I really want in a monopod is not just something that stands straight up. It's something that actually has interlocking legs. So if I really wanted to, I can leave it standing on its own without having to pay attention to it, knowing that it was pretty well secure, sat there by itself. So for me, I went out and I purchased this Siru, I think is how it's pronounced. It's the P224S. This thing is unreal. I love its ability to have interlocking legs. And of course I'm using the Manfrotto head because I'm just using Manfrotto heads on everything, but this is an excellent monopod. Not only is it very stable and secure when I'm using it, but there's one little screw down here that allows me to actually bend it and get some movement in it if I want. Of course, if I tighten it, it just stays in one spot and I can feel pretty secure that the camera is going to rest right on it even when I'm not holding it by myself. The one thing I will say about this monopod though is that it actually has a decent length on it, which is good for when you're shooting the ceremony or receptions, but when you're trying to do detail work and you need to get lower to the ground, honestly, I have to take my camera off this because it's a good solid, I don't know what that is, two and a half feet, three, I don't know but it's a little bit too tall for some of the detail shots when I want to get nice and low. Now I could tell you all about the specific lighting stands that I have for Manfrotto, but it's really not that sexy. They're lighting stands. They're ones, again, made by Manfrotto. They're very durable. They're very good quality, and they're stands that'll go all the way up to the ceiling if you need them to. I'm actually using both of them right now. Otherwise, I'd show them to you. Honestly, just check out the description in my kit, and you can find out where to get them as well. Okay, other things in my bag before we switch gears to audio. Obviously, for me, I love flying this drone. This is the Mavic Air. This is the Fly More pack, the case that it comes in. This little pack fits three batteries, a controller, ND filters, the actual drone, charge ports, cables, pretty much everything that I need when I'm traveling and want to fly my drone. This fits really nice and easy in my Temba bag. I carry it with me pretty much everywhere that I go. Another thing that I have in my Temba bag is the Zion Crane 2, which is version 3, I think because there was the Zion, the Zion version 2, and now the Zion 2. I don't know. Really complicated. Whenever I carry this around, I always feel like it's like a little violin case or something like that. It's kind of cool. Is it Zion Crane? Zion? I don't know. All right, so the Zion Crane. The Zion Crane is an absolutely gorgeous gimbal for the shots that you want to get in 60 and 120 frames per second. The Sony a7S II already has built-in stabilization, but that combined with this gimbal, it is smooth, buttery looking motion. I use this all of the time when I'm getting those really nice cinematic shots in my wedding films, especially when I want it to be slowed down and epic looking. Now when I'm getting those shots using this gimbal, I am going to be using a nice wide angle. I'm usually at about 24 millimeters with this 16 to 35 millimeter lens that I have on the camera right now. And that gives me a nice wide feel. I can punch in if I need to, but really 24 millimeters is exactly where I wanna be on the a7S II. 
combined with this Zion crane. A couple other must-haves. I use these plastic bags for pretty much everything, and I've got a different bag for different things. This would be all of my um, audio mic cables that I need. This one is a little bit empty right now, but it's all of my power bricks, my batteries, charge cables, holy cow, I need these like crazy. And I just bought this. This isn't in my kit or anything. I think I got this at Lowe's for nine bucks, but it's a power brick. The only thing that is a little bit unique about it is that it also has two charge ports for USB. One thing you'll find when you start buying all this stuff is that everything is USB chargeable, which is great in some aspects. Not great if you don't have all the adapters and connectors. The other thing too is sometimes it's very difficult to find multiple locations for uh, outlets at weddings. So for me, if I can just plug this in, I can get some of my bigger things that I need to plug into an outlet for, and then I can have two different ports to charge batteries, to charge really anything that I need. Instead of cranking up your shutter speed to get that that perfect exposure, you can just use these ND filters. Essentially, they're sunglasses for your camera so you don't get super overexposed shots and also so you don't have to put your shutter speed up to five, 600. I really like these ones. These ones are made by Hoya. They're called Solus Professional IRND. I have one for each of my lenses and I use them all of the time. Another thing that I have for wedding filmmaking is this Edelkrone slider. It's something that I've used a ton in the past to really get those slow motion, cinematic, even panoramic and parallax shots that you can get that look so sweet and buttery when you see some of these great wedding films. It's really unique in its design in that it will slide an extra length than just what's there, almost twice the length as what you see in this, this video right now. I just use this a ton for a corporate shoot but to be honest, because of its size and really lack of portability, I really honestly don't use it a ton in wedding films anymore, especially since I can get a lot of those same motions and a lot more motions with the Zion Crane. The last thing I wanna talk about before we get to audio is lighting. For me, I really use two lights. The first one is the Torch LED by a company called Core. It is an awesome, bright portable light that runs on battery power. Something that I think is essential when you're trying to set up lighting at a reception. You never know when you're gonna be able to find a good outlet for your lights. One of the greatest features about the Torch LED light is that it has a color temp adjustment so that you can get a little bit more neutral colors all the way up to really incandescent colors. The great thing about that is that almost every reception I've ever been in has very um, yellow lights, very low lights, and so the ability to go up to pretty much 3500 Kelvin with this light is fantastic for making your footage not have that gross yellowy looking uh, vibe to it. The other light that I use that I really, really like is the cam TV light. This is more of a spotlight. It is something that I really use to light up anybody who is giving a toast at a reception. It's great for distance, it's great for range, and it's something that is set at 5500 Kelvin, so it does have a little bit of that incandescent feel to it, especially in receptions that, again, are usually very yellow. Now, I use the Cam TV light mostly for whoever's giving the toast because it is a brighter, a little bit more in-your-face light. I use the Torch LED mostly to light the bride and groom because it's not as harsh of a light, but provides just what I need when I'm trying to make sure that my footage looks the right color temperature balance. One of the things I like about using both of these lights is that they both can run on Sony's battery. That to me is essential, that I have equipment that all works interchangeably just so that I have that ease of going between if I need to. Now one of the things I'll say about the battery life is that for the Torch LED, the battery life is phenomenal, but for the Cam TV, it's not great, especially when you're trying to get 100% usage out of the Cam TV. Unfortunately, when the battery gets down to even 60%, the light is gonna to totally shut down if you have the power up to 100. So for me, that's why I do try to use the 
plug-in adapter for the cam TV when I'm at receptions. That way I can keep the light at 100% power for the whole time without worrying about battery life. But I do still like that it has the capability of batteries just in case I can't find an outlet. The ability for both lights to take the same battery is actually essential for what it is that I need it to do. The last thing that is absolutely essential involving weddings and gear has everything to do with your audio. You have to have great audio if you want to take your wedding films to the next level. So for me, I use a variety of professional audio gear, starting with the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. This is a shotgun mic that I put on the top of my A7S II. It's something that's on that pretty much the entire day. I do use it to get some of my main audio for my weddings, mostly when the bride is talking with the bridal party as they're getting ready. It's really used for that type of audio, not really for anything that are main speaking features throughout the film, but having the VideoMic Pro is really great for matching the professional audio that I use that's external to the camera and then matching it with the video that is internal to this camera. So VideoMic Pro Plus, great microphone. I'm using it right now. I use it for all of my videos on YouTube great, portable, durable, everyday microphone. But when I really want to get that up close, crisp, professional sounding audio from the bride, the groom, and from the officiant, I use these little things from Tascam. I have a couple of them. These little lapel mics are absolutely perfect. So this little mic just gets hooked up to their shirt. They take this receiver and they put it right in their jacket pocket and it records to a mini SD card that is inside of this. There really is nothing that is getting uh, mixed up in frequency because it's recording to itself. So I'll put one of these on both the officiant as well as on the groom. I don't put these on the bride usually because it's a lot harder to place and to hide. So I take the SD card from this, I match it up with the video images that I'm getting and that's what helps give me this really great professional sounding audio that can absolutely drive the story to your cinematic wedding footage. Well, now that I'm getting great crystal clear professional sounding audio from the groom and from the officiant, how do I make sure that I'm getting good audio from the bride as well as good audio from all of the people giving toasts? I can't possibly mic up each and every one of them. Well. I use this little guy. This is the Zoom H4n Pro. Yeah, there's probably newer versions of this out there, but this one works really, really well for me for a couple of reasons. Number one, these mics up here don't ever use. I pretty much just use the inputs that are coming from the bottom of this device. This device can actually work with XLR cables, quarter inch cables, and RCA cables. Every single wedding I've ever been to, the DJ system is completely different from one DJ to another. So I don't want to be a pain. They're usually pretty reluctant for us plugging into their board. So I want to be as accommodating as possible, mostly because I really want to get the audio that they're setting up. So that's why it's great to have the flexibility for plugging in through RCA, through quarter inch and through XLR. Okay, so that's the gear that I bring to most of my weddings. To be honest, for time, I didn't even get to everything, but I did show most of the essential gear that I use each and every wedding. And if you do go ahead and purchase anything off my kit, I do wanna let you know that I do make a small little piece of that sale, and that really goes a long way to help continue making these videos for you. I hope this was helpful. I hope it kind of gives you a little bit of a taste of what professional videographers are using for their weddings and maybe even helps you get on the right track for the type of gear you might be looking for. I encourage you to try to find what works best for you. And if you need additional help, please leave comments below. I welcome any questions on any of the gear that I've talked about today. And I also welcome any questions about being a cinematographer, especially as it's geared towards wedding cinematography. Thanks so much for watching. 
please like this video if it was helpful to you. Subscribe to my channel because we have so much more to get to in the next couple videos. Thank you and happy filming.